Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my presentation. Um, this is going to be my presentation about my research um, that I did uh, with the Lewis Center Fellowship. All right, so um, the work I'm doing here is, um, is looking at how the COVID-19 pandemic um, may have influenced changes in housework and care work time for um, families in California. So as we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic really brought the world to a standstill in early 2020. Um, California experienced its uh, initial lockdown in March of 2020 with schools closing, um, most businesses having to uh, either close or um, considerably limit operations. Um, a lot of workers moved into a remote work environment or experiencing unemployment. Um, and so just, you know, a lot of, a lot of changes. There have been a lot of news articles and a few academic studies that have started to describe some of the early consequences of uh, the pandemic for families, um, particularly in families where children are learning from home, parents are working from home, um, and also for those families in which economic hardship is really increased. Um, so the study that I am doing here um, makes use of some novel data that I collected from California residents between the ages of 18 and 40 to really try and understand changes in housework, care work, and elder, uh, sorry, housework, child care, and elder care time for men and women across partnered and unpartnered individuals um, and for parents and non-parents. And part of the motivation of this study is that it's really gonna be crucial, I think, to understand the inequities um, that uh, have been experienced with the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, you know, there are, there are health inequities, but there are also other socioeconomic um, and other types of health inequities. Um, and these can have really significant consequences for individual and family health and well-being and for long-term financial stability. So that's really a part of the motivation of the study. So um, studies of housework and care work typically rely on one of four theoretical frameworks um, that I've listed here, time availability, um, the idea that, um, so these, these uh, studies typically are looking at the division of work in household. And so time availability, for example, says that the partner who has more time available for um, housework will do more housework or care work relative resources basically says that if you make more money than the other person in your partnership, you're gonna use that money to sort of bargain out of housework and care work potentially. Doing gender, which just says that um, housework and care work are normative for women and not for men. Um, and, uh, and then gender deviance neutralization. And the idea with that one is that um, if you're deviant, so say an unemployed man, um, you're gonna do less house or care work than you would otherwise. If you're a woman who out earns her husband, you're gonna do more housework or care work than you would otherwise. Um, my colleague and I have really, um, we're really skeptical about this last uh, theory um, and we've shown that it doesn't really seem to be well supported um, in actual data. But I think that um, the typical approach to studying housework and care work really um, may fall short when we're thinking about how to study the pandemic, in part because a lot of workers um, had to transition to working from home. Uh, a lot of parents were caring for children while also working simultaneously. Um, and, and that's really kind of changes the calculus. The other thing that's really important here to think about is that when people have too much housework or care work to do, what they tend to try and do if they have the resources is outsource that work, right? Whether that's to um, having someone come and clean their house uh, every couple of weeks, paying for childcare um, outside of the home and so forth. But with the shutdown, it really limited people's ability to outsource um, household labor, not to mention that a lot of it, families experienced financial crises that really made it impossible to even think about spending that kind of money. So I think 
I think the pandemic may have been unique in some ways, and that's part of the reason I think it's really interesting to look at. Studies of the early pandemic period have found pretty significant shifts in housework and care work time and really large difference, uh, gender differences in the effects of these shifts. Um, and there's a lot of concern about the potential long-term implications for women's careers. So um, the data were collected through a Qualtrics survey made available through NTERC. Um, so my faculty fellowship um, helped to support the um, the payments to participants uh, on MTARC. Um, the survey itself was offered in English and Spanish to California residents between the ages of 18 and 40, but the majority of my respondents completed the survey in English. Um, the survey includes questions on uh, a wide variety of topics, um, including paid and unpaid labor, decision-making around family formation, experiences of COVID and so forth. Um, and uh, some of the questions were um, created by other people who were putting out COVID surveys and some of the questions I created myself. The analysis you're gonna see comes from the first wave of data, which is collected between December of 2020 and February, 2021. So it's later in the pandemic period, but it's also a period in California where um, cases were really high again and uh, a lot of things that had sort of slightly reopened were shutting back down. Um, Wave two is in the field now, it's almost complete. And then wave three um, will be fielded in uh, from mid-May to uh, the end of June. So the sample I'm gonna be talking to you about today includes 244 individuals with, uh, without missing data on housework time. The original goal was to have a sample of 8,000, or sorry, 800 uh, individuals, um, but I just didn't get that kind of response rate. So there are four dependent variables, hours per week spent on housework, hours per week spent on primary childcare. So that's like the hands-on kind of childcare, like feeding your child, bathing your child, uh, uh, maybe hands-on homework help. Um, hours spent on secondary childcare. So that that's uh, things like you're supervising your child while you're doing something else, like cooking dinner, maybe working your own job and so forth. And then number four is the hours per week spent on elder care. And I don't actually have a lot of people in the sample um, who are engaged in elder care. The key independent variables are race, ethnicity, age, gender identity, education, partnership status, um, parenthood status, and the number of children. Um, I'm going to show, show you first a descriptive analysis of patterns of time spent. And then um, I'm going to uh, show you some linear regression models um, where each outcome is predicted by a single predictor. So race, ethnicity, gender identity, education, partnership, uh, et cetera. Okay, so here we go. The mean age of the sample is approximately 30. Um, and the proportions of European or other white ethnicity um, and African-American or black are consistent with the population of California. The proportions of different Asian and Pacific Islander ethnicities um, are higher in my sample than in California. And the proportion, uh, also the proportion of native tribes and other ethnicity not listed or multi-ethnicity. Um, the proportion of Mexican, Salvadoran, or other Hispanic or Latino ethnicity is low compared to the population of California, though. More than half the sample identifies as a woman, and more than half the sample holds a bachelor's degree. About half the sample is partnered, and about one-third has a child. So here you can see some descriptive results. Uh, women's time and effort is on the left-hand panel, and men's time and effort is on the right-hand panel. Um, and so uh, the first few columns are the actual hours in housework and then uh, and care work. And then the other columns are the percent done by self versus uh, one's partner for people who have partners. The darker bars are the pre-pandemic period and the lighter bars are the pandemic period. Um, and so what you can see is that women's time in each outcome is a bit higher during the pandemic than pre-pandemic. Um, 
but the only the housework difference is statistically significant. To clarify, to get the pre-pandemic hours, um, I asked people um, how many hours per week they spent in each activity before the pandemic, and then I asked them how many hours a week they were spending currently, so during the pandemic. Women report increases in the percent uh, of cooking and childcare that they do during the pandemic. Um, they also report completing more than half of all household tasks. Men had significant experience, uh, had an experience of significant increase in housework time. Um, though you can see they're still spending less time on average uh, in housework than women. Um, and they had a pretty um, substantively large jump in primary childcare time, but it's not statistically significant. Men also report increases in the percent of cleaning, cooking, home maintenance, and childcare per deal. Um, and uh, I think one thing that's kind of interesting is that men's and women's reports of the percent of tasks they complete don't really align. So these are not people who are necessarily partnered, but you can see that um, on all of these tasks, uh, men and women are both essentially reporting that they do more than half of the tasks in their household. Um, and so that's uh, adding up to more than 100%, right? Um, so uh, we can imagine there might be um, some over-reporting going on on both sides. All right, the model results are shown here. Um, there's a lot on this table, so, these tables, so I'll just point out a couple of key things. The left-hand table is the housework hours models. The middle table is the primary child care models and the right-hand table is the elder care models. Um, and what you can see uh, is that in model one, which is just the race ethnicity piece, um, there's a significant increase in housework time and also elder care time um, for the very heterogeneous group of native tribe, another ethnicity not listed, and multi-ethnicity ethnic group. Um, we can see there are no significant gender differences, which I think is pretty interesting um, given prior research. Uh, in model three, we can see that higher education is generally associated with greater increases in housework. And I think that part of this is probably um, related to outsourcing, that uh, people with higher education tend to be more likely to outsource some of their labor, um, and the pandemic made that less feasible. Um, and that'll be something I look at in future uh, work. Models four and five, we can see that partnerships, so being married or cohabiting and parenthood were associated with increases in housework. Um, and partnership is also associated with less elder care time, um, which again requires further investigation. Um, and in model six, we can see that having children is associated with increases in housework time which is um, something we've seen in a lot of prior research. Um, and uh, we also see a little bit of a reduction in elder care time for people with two children. Um, and that may simply be related to demands on time, right? If both children, for example, are now at home, it may be less possible to provide elder care. All right, so overall, the results suggest that increases in housework time were pretty common during the pandemic. Um, but the perceived changes in the division of labor may not align with the actual changes in time spent in labor. Um, there is no significant gender disparity in the changes in housework time, which is um, a really interesting finding, I think, um, perhaps related to the age of the sample and the sample being a younger sample. Um, there are limited increases in time spent in primary child care, but the estimates are pretty noisy. So this is gonna require additional investigation um, with more data. The major limitation is that there's a small sample size here. Um, my hope is that longitudinal analysis, once I have more waves of data or a different um, analysis method may shed some additional light on these relationships. Um, Future directions for the project include incorporating psychosocial well-being, delving further into questions uh, about child age and how child age might be related to these different outcomes, um, looking at multi-generational households, thinking about outsourcing behavior, um, and also you know, thinking about people's experiences 
perhaps with having COVID um, and how that might have uh, influenced changes in labor. I think it's also really, really important to examine perceptions of fairness in thinking about how changes in the division of labor may affect well being. So, um, everyone really experienced some major changes with the pandemic in terms of their labor, um, whether it was paid or unpaid, um, and whether or not people perceive some of these changes as fair, particularly partnered individuals. I think is going to be really important for understanding um, people's long-term well-being. So, um, if you know you're doing a lot more work than you used to be, but you perceive it to be really fair division, um, that's probably less likely to have negative consequences for you than if you uh, feel like it's very unfair. For example, in terms of your uh, mental well-being. So there are a few references here. And again, um, I would just like to acknowledge that this research was supported by a Lewis Center Faculty Research Fellowship from the Randall Lewis Center for Wellbeing and Research at the University of Laverne. Thank you so much for your time. Um, if you have any questions, um, you're welcome to send me an email. My information is available on the uh, Lewis Center webpage. Thank you so much for your time.